It must have been an exciting time to witness the discoveries of Venus when they were made and what they meant to scientists at the time. The first images, the first data transmissions, all were groundbreaking at that moment. What we learned from it had scientists confused as to what we had expected when the landing was made. Before we get into the discoveries made during the Venus landing, let's talk about how it was all achieved. Now let's get into the Soviet Union's Venera program, which is like a grand saga of space exploration. This story starts in the early 1960s and goes on for over two decades. It's a journey of courage, innovation, and a bit of mystery much like the quests of ancient explorers, but this time it's in the cosmic ocean. Imagine it's 1961 and here's Venera 1, ready to make history as the first spacecraft to fly by Venus. It's like launching a message in a bottle into the vastness of space, hoping to uncover the secrets of Venus. Venera 1 was packed with cool gadgets, a magnetometer, cosmic ray detectors, stuff that would make any tech enthusiast's heart race. But here's where the plot thickens. Just a week after launch, we lost contact. It's like the spacecraft just vanished into the cosmic void, probably because of a power failure. It was a setback, but think about it. This was humanity's first shot at reaching another planet. Fast forward to 1965, and we have the twin adventurers, Venera 2 and 3, aiming not just to fly by Venus, but to touch its surface, a feat straight out of science fiction. Venera 2 got tantalizingly close, but then silence. It probably got overwhelmed by Venus's hot temper, metaphorically speaking. Then there's Venera 3. Now this one's a dramatic twist. It actually crash-landed on Venus. It was like touching an alien world, but without a word back. No data, no whispers from another world, just a silent landing. It's kind of eerie when you think about it. The first earthly object to touch another planet, and it's just sitting there silent in the Venusian landscape. Let me tell you about the Venera 4 mission in 1967 which was an absolute game-changer in our quest to unravel the secrets of Venus. Launched in June, this intrepid explorer dived into Venus's atmosphere by October, becoming the first mission ever to send us real-time data from another planet's atmosphere. But here's where the drama intensifies. Venera 4, designed to withstand pressures we thought were tough enough, was in for a surprise. Venus's atmosphere was way more crushing than we'd ever imagined, at about 27 kilometers above the surface, our brave little probe couldn't take it anymore. It was a valiant effort, but Venus proved too much for it. Now riding on the wave of excitement from Venera 4, in come Venera 5 and 6 in 1969, these siblings of space were on a mission to delve even deeper into the enigmatic atmosphere of Venus. They plunged into the Venusian atmosphere, beaming back more data, building on the story that Venera 4 had started. It was like putting together pieces of an interstellar puzzle. But just like Venera 4, they couldn't touch the surface. The extreme conditions of Venus claimed these probes too before they could make a landing. The findings from these missions, especially Venera 4, were monumental. They didn't just give us a glimpse into Venus's atmospheric secrets, they set the stage for future missions. It was like we had just opened a new chapter in space exploration, learning not just about Venus, but also about designing spacecraft capable of withstanding such extreme environments. As the missions evolved, they turned into a real cosmic saga, unveiling secrets of our mysterious neighbor, Venus. Let me take you through this amazing journey. In 1975, Venera 9 and 10 were launched, packed with the latest tech to land on Venus. What happened next was nothing short of historic. Venera 9 lands and bam, it sends back the first ever images from Venus's surface, we're talking groundbreaking stuff here. The first time we Earthlings got to see what Venus looks like up close a rocky landscape that was just mind-blowing. And then, Venera 10 follows up, landing successfully and sending back more pictures. This was a big deal because now we had more than just a glimpse. We had actual clear views of an alien world surface. But the adventure didn't stop there. In 1978, here come Venera 11 and 12 with a mission to dive deeper into the mysteries of Venus's atmosphere and surface. They were like cosmic detectives armed with all sorts of instruments, spectrometers, gas analyzers, you name it. Sure, they ran into some hiccups with their cameras, but the data they sent back, pure gold. They gave us a peek into the chemical makeup and the dynamic nature of Venus's atmosphere. Now fast forward to 1981 and get ready for this. Venera 13 and 14. These missions were out of this world, literally. Venera 13 does something extraordinary. 
It sends back the first color images of Venus's surface. Imagine that seeing the surface of another planet in color for the first time. And right on its heels, Venera 14 also sends color images and does all these cool experiments, adding even more to our understanding of Venus. Getting into the Vega program, which was like the grand finale of the Soviet Union's exploration of Venus. In 1984, something truly extraordinary happened with the launch of Vega 1 and Vega 2. These missions were space exploration at its most daring and inventive. They weren't just going to Venus, they had a double agenda. After swinging by Venus, they were set to rendezvous with none other than Halley's Comet. It's like hitting two cosmic birds with one stone. Now here's where it gets really interesting. When Vega 1 and 2 got to Venus, they didn't just orbit or land, they deployed balloons. Imagine that, balloons floating in the alien atmosphere of Venus like something out of a Jules Verne novel. These balloons weren't your average party balloons. They were sophisticated, floating around, collecting all sorts of data on Venus's weather and atmospheric conditions. It was a first in interplanetary exploration, and the kind of stuff that gets you thinking, what else is possible? But the journey didn't end at Venus. After their Venusian escapade, both Vega spacecraft continued on their cosmic path to meet up with Halley's Comet. This was a big deal because comets are like the time capsules of the solar system, and Halley's Comet is the most famous of them all. The Vega missions gave us a chance to peek into the very building blocks of our solar system. Sadly though, by the late 1980s things began to change. The Soviet Union started shifting its focus away from Venus, marking the end of an era in space exploration. But let's not forget the impact of the Venera and Vega programs. They were like the trailblazers of space exploration. Now let's discuss some of the incredible discoveries that concern scientists from Russia's Venus landings through the Venera program. These missions were like interplanetary detectives, uncovering secrets of Venus that blew our minds. First off, the atmosphere of Venus, it's almost entirely carbon dioxide. We're talking a whopping 96-97%. This was a huge find. It's like Venus was showing us what a runaway greenhouse effect looks like up close. And the pressure, oh boy, it's like nothing we have on Earth, about 92 times what you'd feel at sea level here. Can you imagine that kind of squeeze? It's like being deep underwater, but on a whole planet. Then there's the heat. Venus is scorching hot, averaging around 465 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt lead. It paints a picture of a world that's not just hostile to life as we know it, but also a brutal challenge for any spacecraft brave enough to land there. And the landscape, it's like something out of a sci-fi movie. The Venera probe sent back images and soil data that showed a world shaped by volcanic forces. We're talking about a terrain covered in basalt-like rocks and signs of extensive lava flows. It's a volcanic wonderland that completely changed our view of Venus's geological past. Now get this, Venus's clouds are made of sulfuric acid. Talk about harsh weather. This revelation wasn't just about how extreme Venus is. It also raised big questions about how planets evolve and what kind of tech we need to explore such hostile environments. But here's something really out there. The Venera missions detected lightning in Venus's atmosphere. Yes, lightning. This suggests that Venus has some pretty dynamic and complex weather patterns, despite its slow surface winds and dense cloud cover. It's like Venus is keeping a few secrets up its sleeve, challenging what we think we know about planetary weather. Now lastly, let's get into some of the mind-bending stuff we learned about Venus from the Venera missions, particularly its rotation and magnetic field, and what this all means for future missions. Venus, this enigmatic neighbor of ours, has some peculiar tricks up its sleeve. Firstly, Venus's rotation is a real cosmic oddity. It spins backward compared to most planets in our solar system. That's like watching a ballet dancer suddenly pirouetting in the opposite direction. And talk about taking its sweet time, a day on Venus is longer than its year. Imagine having a birthday every day, that's Venus for you. This slow retrograde spin is more than just an interesting fact. It's crucial for understanding the planet's atmospheric dynamics and why it doesn't have much of a magnetic field. Speaking of magnetic fields, Venus's is incredibly weak. It's like having a faint shield against the solar wind, the stream of charged particles coming from the sun. This weak magnetic field lets the solar wind strip away particles from Venus's upper atmosphere, which is a big deal for understanding how planets lose their atmospheres over time. Now, these findings aren't just cool bits of trivia. They have serious implications for future missions to Venus. The extreme conditions there, 
The intense heat, crushing pressure and the corrosive atmosphere are like the ultimate test for spacecraft engineering. It's like designing a car that can drive through a volcano. The data we've got from Venus also makes us wonder about how planets evolve. Venus is like Earth's twisted sister, showing us what happens when the greenhouse effect goes into overdrive. This comparison gives us valuable insights into our own planet's climate and geological history. And here's where it gets really intriguing. The search for life. Sure, Venus's surface seems like the last place you'd find life as we know it. But those discoveries of complex atmospheric chemistry and lightning, they crack open the door to the possibility of life in Venus's upper atmosphere. It's like finding out there might be a hidden oasis in the middle of a cosmic desert. The more we learn about Venus, the more it surprises us, fueling our curiosity and our drive to explore the unknown.